The space race is on with superpowers, billionaires, and Wall Street all in the game. Vector wants to disrupt the multi-billion dollar launch market, hoping to increase access and speed to orbit. Jim Cantrell, Vector co-founder and CEO, joins us now. So you left SpaceX. Yes. We all hear that, like Elon Musk. Like, how do you, you left a job there to found Vector. What, what's the opportunity here? What, what are you trying to do? So we're, we're trying to actually address the next generation of what we see the commercial satellite market to be, which is small. So SpaceX, when, when we originally started, it was not about launching satellites. It was about taking something to Mars. And we, I still think that SpaceX is about going to Mars and uh, just launching satellites to pay for it. But uh, they're doing a nice job of that. So Vector is responding to what's happened in the, in the 18 years since then when we started SpaceX, which is satellites have gotten smaller. They're almost the size of a loaf of bread now and they're getting cheaper, and there's a lot more investment money going into it because the uh, risks are, are a lot more acceptable to investors. So there's going to be a 1,000 satellites a year launched over the next 10 years that are all small, and we'll be the ones to launch them. Um, maybe I'm missing what satellites do. I didn't know there were 1,000 satellites that go up. What are these <laughs> loaf of bread-sized satellites going to be doing? I mean, great question. We, yeah, hear like, great we hear like <laughs> you know, Wi-Fi balloons and stuff. I mean, yeah. what are those satellites? Who's buying them, I suppose? Yeah, yeah. so there's really two end uses for these satellites. It's either transmitting data or it's taking pictures of sorts. Mm -hmm. So communications is probably two-thirds of it right now. And everything that you do closer to the Earth in terms of communication and imaging gets better because of the inherent physics of it. So the closer you get to Earth, instead of being a geostationary orbit some 26,000 miles away, if you're several hundred miles away, your physics get better. You can use smaller satellites. And uh, that, that's one of the secrets of, of this proliferation. You just need more of them because you need more of them to cover the surface of the Earth. So it's mo mostly commercial companies, but there's a lot of, a lot of use cases that are in the... Uh, the defense industry and NASA and so forth, they're starting to adopt all these things. There's two CubeSats that just, just arrived at Mars in the last few weeks. Yeah. When, we, uh, when we look at the space race, and maybe it's just us at Yahoo Finance because we're so obsessed with these enigmatic billionaires, but we mentioned Musk, then you've got Bezos in the mix, you've got Richard Branson. Uh, where does Vector sit in all this, and what do you make of that kind of the blue origin versus SpaceX narrative? Well, we're venture finance, so we have Sequoia, and Lightspeed and, and uh, Morgan Stanley and Codem Ventures out of uh, New York here that's who's, who's funded us to date. We've raised over $100 million to date. And so we represent sort of the, the new, newest wave of these, these commercial space entities. Whereas originally back in the space race, when I was a young man, uh, the, it was a competition between nation states. And right. only nation states had the capital to do these sort of things. And then you started to see around the time Elon was getting involved, the billionaire boys club was was starting to do these things and now because of the economics of it the you know it's it's, it's uh, predicted to grow to two trillion dollars by 2040 there's there's an investor interest and so the combination between that and the cost coming down is is where the investor interest comes you don't need billionaire funding these things anymore so vector is going to be essentially the future elevators of the space industry if you look at new york what made the real estate able to grow is elevator technology. Before you had elevators, there was no more than three or four floors. We're just doing the same thing in space uh, to, to the terrestrial economy. Uh, you mentioned nation states uh, in the first space race. They're still involved now to an extent. Uh, China still? just landed no. on the dark side of the moon. Do you think that that uh, has any national security implications? Absolutely, yeah. So, so space gives uh, the United States in particular an asymmetric advantage when it fights a war. For example, GPS that we all carry around in our phones was originally a military system for navigation and for targeting weapon systems. In uh, 1985, I think it was, when the, Korean, when the Soviets shot down a Korean airliner that had Americans aboard, uh, Ronald Reagan opened up GPS for civilian use. So there's a crossover between civilian and, and military uses of space. And so when you see countries like China doing what they're doing, it's, it's prestige. China always desires to have a seat at the table be equals among giants, and that's really one of the things that's going on. The second thing is, it sends a definite message that if they are sophisticated enough, they can send a probe all the way around the far side of the moon, land it, talk to it, maneuver it. There's some sophistication in their technology. So the, China's different than the U.S. because they're not a capitalist nation per se, uh, and so, so the, the implications on commerce are quite different. But uh, definitely the, the Chinese see this as a money-making opportunity as well. Now, at the top of the show, you said you think SpaceX is just about going to Mars. 
Uh, do you think Elon Musk will get to Mars? He said that he do, himself actually. believes he'll get there. You think he'll do yeah. it? Yeah, when he called me out of the blue in 2001, it was a you know, July afternoon, and you know, it was this whole spiel about how he wanted to make humanity a multiplanetary species, and we went to try to buy rockets from the Russians, and they wouldn't sell them, so we decided to build rockets. That's how SpaceX came about. It wasn't that he came and said, hey, I really want to build rockets, launch satellites. I think it's a great business. It, it, it's always been about going to Mars for him, and it's about planetary... Uh, expansion of the human species. And so as I watch him go, and I've been saying this for 10 years, and 10 years ago people thought I was nuts. They thought I was nuts to leave, and sometimes I think maybe I was nuts to leave. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that, that I would say, hey, he's, you know, he wants to go to Mars, and I believe he's going to. Gradually people take me seriously, and that's one of the reasons we started SpaceX, is, or excuse me, Vector, is we saw that companies like SpaceX weren't really paying attention to what I think is the future uh, profitable market, which is the, the small sats. Cool stuff. Jim Cantrell, really fun to talk to you. The company Thank is you. Vector, and uh, get a little update on uh, the space race. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We're going to be back.